All right, so we're getting some ideas right here of uh, why social media and such. It's the newer generation of marketing, but it's marketing. It's advertising that has been around a long time. So the twist is that it's digital, it's not tangible. Like in the old days, it's a paper, it's a flyer, whatever. And we see, we'll see that our our barrier to entry can be pretty low, it can be pretty affordable to get started with it, but I do have zero plus, meaning that it could cost you uh, real money to advertise well on these platforms, and we will cover that too. That is, how do you reach even more people, how is it more effective? The short answer is if you pay, the social networks, you'll reach more people. But we won't cover that until a little later. We'll cover the free stuff first. Let's talk a little bit more conceptually right here. More notes. Uh, there's a little bit of jargon that we have to talk about regarding marketing, especially digital marketing. We have this concept called impressions, conversions, and CTR. Impressions. How many people see your content? Conversions. How many people act upon your content? This is related to the bigger ideas of the marketing funnel, which is a topic you can read on your own. Uh, you can look up here, uh, find more info, the marketing funnel. So imagine a funnel. Um, so we've got a funnel that tapers down. This is my, my pen is running out of ink. But okay, that's a funnel. Something goes in and something comes out. So a marketing funnel. in something comes out what's going in is a lot of potential customers what's coming out are customers so I want to try to get as many potential customers and there's various steps to go through this to then eventually hopefully get a real paying customer that's the marketing funnel you can look that up on your own I'm simplifying it very very simply here in the form of impressions near the top and conversions near the bottom. So very simple, very simple simplification of the marketing funnel. So the opening is people see my billboard, people see or hear my radio ad, People see my post on Facebook, my video on YouTube, people see it. Conversions is how many people act upon that content. So if we say, okay, impressions, content, which will be, let's keep it with the world in the realms of digital. So a tweet, a video a post, a blog, a pin, whatever the jargon of the network is, it's all content. A video is the main format in YouTube. A pin is the main format in Pinterest. A tweet is on Twitter, etc. They've all got a name, but it's all content, like in the real world. Ad on the radio, ad in the newspaper, ad on TV. Those are all ads, they're all content, it's just that one's audio, one's visual, one's multimedia. So an impression is anything that you put out that people see or hear or whatever. The conversion is that someone acts upon it, which is a like, a favorite, a comment, a reply, a reshare a follow again different sort of jargon for just about the same thing 
we'll see that these networks have a lot of commonalities. They call them different things, but they all kind of are the same sort of commonalities. So oftentimes in the real world, if you've heard of conversions, in the real world, pretty much, usually it means a sale. They were converted. The person was converted from a non-buyer to a buyer. That's the one that really, really matters in the real world, a sale. Let's say in the real world I've got, I always use the fictional business, Victor's Bakery. The purpose of Victor's Bakery is to sell baked goods. So I'm going to do all that I can on a radio ad, TV ad, whatever, to try to promote my products because ultimately the conversion I care about for Victor's Bakery is to sell cupcakes. That's the most important thing in the real world. Unfortunately, in the digital world, it is so much more difficult to get that result. Even though you can click a mouse and do anything you want with it, suddenly it's very difficult for people to click the buy button, the donate button, the, the volunteer button, whatever. People can like the photo, reply to the photo, but when it comes down to click buy, suddenly that's a lot harder. So that's why conversions are also are always are often difficult to accomplish. So basically, any action is a conversion, but you can kind of then also say the ultimate conversion a sale. And of course, if you're a nonprofit organization, it's a donation or it's a volunteer. If I'm simply, let's say I'm very interested in writing my political opinions and I simply want people to read them and find out how great I am in my opinions. Well, I just want readers. That's a conversion. I'm not selling anything. So a lot of times people think a conversion means a sale. No, it's any action where a person is converted from a non-liker to a liker from a non-reply non to a reply, from a non-follower to a follow, they're all conversions. The ultimate one for many of us is a sale, which is often the hardest one. That goes double on the real world. That person flipping that sign that says, brand new houses starting at only $500,000. Well, that's going to be a harder sell than the person flipping the sign that says uh, oil tune-up, $29.99. So this ultimate conversion varies by everyone. It varies for everyone. CTR, click-through rate. A percentage of effectiveness. This is how you can tell how effective you are with a percentage. Um, here's the example. Let's say impressions. Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and all of them will tell you your stats, your impressions and conversions and everything. So let's say on Facebook I posted I, made a I put a message, I made a post on Facebook, sale this Saturday, use this coupon for 10% off. I post that. I get some amount of impressions. Let's say 148 likes, replies, whatever. Let's just say 148, or I mean, sorry, 148 views on that coupon, 148 views. And conversions were, well, how many, how many clicks did I get? How many sales did I get? How many replies? Whatever your metric is, whatever your goal of a conversion. Let's say sales. Let's say it actually resulted in a few sales. Seven. Seven actual sales that I can track. And we'll talk about how to track later. But let's say calculator 7 divided by 148, 4.73%. So that was a success rate of 4%. Um, 
That was the CTR. 7 divided by 148 equals 4.73%. 4.73% effectiveness. If this were a grade, that'd be an F. Minus, minus, minus. Um, very, very, very low result. That is very common. That is actually, actually very good. Many times, many people's results are more in the 1% range. This is just some random numbers I threw out. I'll show real numbers later. But don't be surprised or disappointed, especially in the beginning, that your CTR is very low, single digits, not counting the fraction. Obviously, I want 90% CTR or 90% success. Well, you are a superstar, and you have a product that everyone wants, like oxygen, maybe. But for most people, most products, you're going to be single digits, maybe 9 10%, maybe 12 You know, very, very low, 25% effectiveness. This is why there's that same billboard on seven streets. This is why that radio ad plays 12 times a day. This is why you keep getting that same junk mail in your mailbox every day. The more they do it, the more they put it out, the more they're out there visible. In the real world, there's all those impressions. Think about all of those people that see that uh, billboard. Very high impressions, especially on rush hour. Very low conversions. No one's calling. They're driving. And I don't need a plumber. And so it's going to be very low result in the real world. In the digital world, it is also like that, unfortunately, because it's so easy, as I said, to give the, the like and a follow and a reshare, but then suddenly it's very hard to click buy or subscribe. So very common to have a very low CTR, or success rate. It's very common. Again, nothing to be... Um, Disappointed at in the beginning, what's disappointing is if it doesn't improve after learning how to do it right. But in the very beginning, you might have a very low success rate. So it's very common to have a very low success, success rate, single digits, you know, 1 to 3 percent. Very common. If we assume most of us are going to get, let's say, a 1 percent result. If we assume that we're stuck at 1%, what's 1% 1 of 100 impressions? One. One. Okay. Um, so that means if I go to 200 impressions, I get 2%, two, two conversions. If I go to 500 impressions, five conversions, five sales, let's say. So. If I know that I'm going to be stuck at 1%, how do I get more results? Increase the price of the product? Mm. Increase the price of the product? Yeah, we'll have a more expensive product as opposed to a cheap product. The net, the net income is going to be larger. Hmm, yeah, that, that, is, uh, that is true, actually. If you have your more expensive product, you need to sell less of it, sure. Let's say we're trying to grow the numbers rather than the s rather than the income. How would we increase the numbers? More impressions. More impressions. How do I get more conversions with the same uh, with the same percentage with the same CTR? More impressions. That relates exactly to this. Yes. Impressions, I want more people to see it. Therefore, I'm going to increase my market. Yes. So more impressions. 1% of 100 is 1. 1% of 1,000 is 10. 1% 1 of 100,000 is 100. How much? 1,000. So it goes higher and higher. The more impressions I have, if we assume we're going to be at 1%, those, <laughs> those conversions are getting larger by nature. So, as social media marketers, that's us, 
we are going to use social media to market we are going to become social media marketers as social media marketers we are trying to increase impressions we are constantly trying to increase impressions we are trying to increase our audience That was the funnel over here, too. We try to capture a lot of people, but they go through a process of who actually cares about your product. The worst aspect of that is when you get a spam email. I don't need a real authentic Rolex watch. I don't need that little blue pill. I don't need this and that. But I'm getting, the, I'm getting that junk mail, that spam. That's the opposite negative side of it, trying to cast such a wide net that the right people are not going to get it. The right people are down here. So you don't simply want to, to spam. You don't want to tweet to 500 people or 1,000 people that don't care about your product. You want to tweet to the right 500 or the right 20 or the right 2,000. So that sort of seems opposite here. We are trying to increase our audience all the time. Well, doesn't that mean I need to spam everyone? No, definitely not. You're trying to increase your audience of the right audience. We are trying to increase the audience that cares about our product to increase our conversions. not spamming. People come to these classes sometimes and say, should I buy followers? I saw that I can pay $5 and I'll get 10,000 followers. I'm going to increase my audience. No, don't do that. Don't buy followers. Those are fake accounts that are not going to buy your product. Um, People come in and say, okay, I saw an ad that I can buy an email list, 10,000 names, for only $40. Should I do it? No. Again, you're getting um, a bunch of email addresses that were pretty much stolen, and you're going to start sending them ads for your product. They're going to block you or report you or whatever, and you're not going to reach the audience that you really wanted. Um, so we need to judiciously increase our audience to the right people. So using social media we can find the right people to grow our impressions and conversions oftentimes a lot easier than traditional marketing. That company had to put a radio ad on three different stations and pay for certain hours of the day. They wanted a, a Friday at 6 p.m. So they pay $500, let's say. Well, another company says, we'll pay you $700 for that 5 o'clock spot at Friday. And the radio station says, great, we've got a deal. So then I have to come back with $800 to get that spot on Friday at 6 o'clock. And then the competitor says, OK, we'll pay $10,000 for the whole month. And then I'm out of that time. So it's an arms race in the real world that you're constantly paying to reach this audience. In the digital world, you can start off with zero budget, or a low budget, or a high budget. We'll get to that later. We'll start with the zero budget first. on our social media channels, on our social media accounts. We're trying to get followers all the time. Followers are better than simply increasing your, your audience then getting then getting uh, impressions in that followers are those that have 
chosen to pay attention to you always. If I'm a bakery, I create a Twitter account. I want people to follow my business on Twitter for the purposes of me marketing to them to show them here's a sale, here's what's in store this month, here's a coupon, here's an event. So we're using our social media like our own private broadcast, our own private channel, our own private station or <coughs> billboard. The followers are the ones that want to then constantly be updated to that. There's a new sale, there's a coupon, there's an event. No one follows a billboard on the highway. No one drives by and says, is there a new billboard this week? No one is browsing the radio, uh, the radio stations listening for the commercials. We want to hear the music. Uh, no one watches and rewatches the commercials on TV. We fast forward. But in social media, digitally, people do follow Nike and McDonald's and Chipotle and all of these companies. They, they follow them, and they're getting advertised to. And if we know that, we can do it as well. I want to build an audience in San Diego that wants a very good uh, you know, cupcakes. I'm a San Diego-based company that we sell cupcakes. I want the audience to follow me on social media. Uh, how to do it is the, is, the big, is the meat of the class, of course, and we'll get to it. But conceptually here, we're trying to build followers all the time because this is our audience. Our followers are our captive audience. Even from our followers, we have a low CTR. I might have a hundred followers on Facebook. That means I'm going to make a hundred sales every month, right? Nope. I might make two sales. Two sales out of a hundred followers. Two divided by a hundred. Yeah, what is that? 0 0.2 percent. It's a very low percentage. So the more of these followers that we build, the more of the captive audience that we build, the more we increase our CTR, our success rate. <coughs> and we'll do these, uh, we'll do these things hands-on uh, eventually, but uses of social media for a business. Coupons, ads, sales. These three are the are the constant. Um, these would be the commercial posts. Now, I said, well, people follow these companies. They they want to see these things. Yes, but. Would you personally uh, follow or pay attention to something that is constantly giving you a commercial? Maybe not for very long. A constant sale, constant ad. I'm going to say never mind, and I click unfollow. And I don't see it anymore. I lost an audience. I lost a potential sale. So the uses are the commercial posts, yes. But we also have to balance them with, uh, I'll, I'll write examples in a moment, but these are going to be the community building posts. The ones that are not just about sale, 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 here's an ad. The community building types of posts, types of content. So funny picture. inspirational video well let's do how to video useful article 
So let's say I'm a, I'm a bakery, I'm going to put a, a picture of a kid, he, his face is full of frosting, and then on the caption at the bottom, my first cupcake. Okay, uh, stealthily, I'm trying to sell cupcakes, but it's not an obvious, buy the cupcake that the kid put on his face. I'm just showing a funny picture of a kid with a cupcake. My company's a bakery. We sell cupcakes. It's subtle. It's stealth. I'm going to get likes, replies, more follows. I'm going to get conversions. These conversions that eventually lead to my ultimate conversion, the sale. I might put out a video on Facebook. I'm, I'm trying to sell cupcakes and birthday cakes and all of that. But you've probably seen videos out there that in like 30 seconds, how to bake a cake. You know, fast forward motion of someone dumping the ingredients and mixing it up, 30 seconds, they've got a cake. Obviously, it takes more than 30 seconds to bake a cake. But uh, those kinds of videos that are fast forward types of videos that teach you something, that's something that I could be posting as well to get likes and followers and replies and all of that to get me toward the ultimate conversion. So saying here, there should be a mix between the commercial posts and the community posts. Or else you'll drive your followers away with constant ads. Teaching the basics of how to set up an account and how to use it, that's not so complicated. The why I'm going to use it a certain way, that's a little harder to teach because everyone's got a different goal. You know, we've got 25 people in the class. Some are goods, some people have a goods or services uh, business. Some people are not in a business, whatever. So it's hard to teach exactly what to share, although I'll, I'll give you guidelines and such. The, uh, the what you need to post, that's a little harder. The why, that's, uh, I mean, uh, the, the how to use the networks, that's a little easier to teach. To kind of give examples, Examples of sites. For social media knowledge. Let me show one here first. Let's check this one out. If you go to socialmediaexaminer.com. Let's try this out. Go ahead and go to your web browser, any, br any browser you like. We've got all the popular ones. Go to the address socialmediaexaminer.com and let's check out this site for a moment. socialmediaexaminer.com So I'm going to open up a window here, and um, let's go here, socialmediaexaminer.com. You might get some pop-ups, just close the pop-ups. Socialmediaexaminer.com. I'm not affiliated with this organization. I just uh, often mention it in my classes because it's so useful. This is your guide to the social media jungle. This is a very good website that I would recommend for you to visit on a regular basis focused on social media. It's like a trade journal on social media. There are articles every day, multiple articles every day on industry research, trends, changes to the networks and better yet ideas 
and inspiration of what to do on social media. Because again, like I said, there may be a person that comes in here that's a lawyer and wants to learn how to use Facebook to get more clients. Well, that's one out of 27 people. I have to talk in general about how, what works in general for everyone. But there would most likely be an article in here, how to use Facebook if you're a lawyer. So I want to show this to people right away as something to read. You know, read an article or two before bedtime, dream about it, and then implement it the next day. Uh, let's see, first of all, there's this marking error report. Let me skip that for the moment. Let's see what's here for today. Three powerful graphic design tools for busy marketers. Need a way to create quality social media images? So if I don't have any real graphics skills, this article seems to say, well, what do I, uh, what can I use to create graphics quickly? So you can read that article, a list of three tools. How to use the Facebook Creator app. These networks change all the time, and here's one of the latest changes, the Facebook Creator app. Uh, very, very recently uh, added to the world so that we can use. Here's how to get up to speed. Well, what is it? I never heard about it. Here's what it is, how it's useful. You can read that article. Let's see. Win free tickets to social media marketing world. There's a conference all about social media, and it's here in San Diego. And the tickets are pretty expensive, like $800 per person. You can get a free uh, ticket to it. But you would hobnob with the biggest names in social media marketing. Um, and uh, here's how uh, to get a ticket. So as I'm scrolling down, as you're, as you're on the site, you may get some pop-ups. Uh, here's a pop-up that came up here. Free report, how, social, how marketers use social media. And it pops up here where it says, here's a 49-page free book. Yes, I want the report. No, I'm not interested. This, um, this site practices what it preaches. This site will tell you about what other kind of tricks to do or techniques to do on your website to reach people. And one of them is like this, giving something free to have people keep coming back. Uh, so when we do hands-on, I'll, I'll make a note of it here, but then later on we'll, we'll expound on it deeper. We'll say um, ideas for social media posts free stuff. That social media examiner website, I've, I, I recommend it, so hopefully you return for it uh, because of that. But even if you don't take my recommendation, they have all this free stuff that you should check out. They've got that book, that, that industry report, where they ask a variety of people in the industry, what's hot in 2018? What did we see in 2017? What's effective in Instagram? Well, that website is giving you something for free to keep coming back to the site. To maybe, hopefully, their ultimate conversion, sell tickets to the conference. So some ideas for social media posts are to give something away for free. And we'll see exactly what and how for a real business a little later. Right now we're still speaking conceptually. Did any of you find anything interesting as you browse the site? Any articles that stand out? There's over 700 pages of articles. Anything stand out? Here's something that they've done recently. They're doing a, a, a they're doing a YouTube show. They're doing they're doing um, this documentary. Uh, about what really happens inside a growing business. We're on episode 8 at the moment. This is totally free to watch. But they're showing a real business getting off the ground and what they need to do via social media. So, pretty short. This one's, you know, eight minutes long. So, uh, if you don't have time for the, for the, for reading and such, here's some videos about, um, how a small business is doing it. 
Five social tools for social media marketers. Well, this one's an audio version. You can hear the episode instead of reading it. Let's say I'm commuting. This one's longer, 41 minutes. I can download it, uh, listen to it while I'm working on the dishes, or put it in my car, and listen to it like a book on tape. This is a really great website that just has a variety of content, text, video, audio, on this whole industry of social media. Any questions on this website? Okay, let me mention a few more um, sort of industry websites that would be useful. We've got also blog.buffer.com I'll put that in the notes in a moment, but here's another one you can check out. blog.buffer.com What's a blog? Articles. So here's articles from this organization, buffer.com, which we'll get back to later. <clears throat> but check out that one for a moment, blog.buffer.com. This is uh, one of these industry websites that keeps you up to date with what, what the industry is about and tips, tricks, and goals. Let's see what the latest is here blog.buffer, I guess bufferapp.com. That one also takes you to the same place. 10 free tools to help you understand your social media audience. I'll put it here as well. blog.buffer.com or bufferapp.com. Let me check out that article for a moment. We often recommend crafting your social media posts according to your audience, and we'll cover that in the class as well. So how to find out who your social media audience is, is what I was saying earlier. In the real world, a company has to kind of guess to some degree. If I'm a restaurant and I want to put a commercial on TV, I'm a restaurant, what sorts of channels on TV do you think might be good for me to, po to put my, my uh, commercial on TV? Food Network, sure. Cooking Channel, maybe Home and Garden, HDTV. Uh, any of these sort of food channels if I'm a restaurant I sell food to hungry people maybe hungry people are watching Food Network my ad appears they might come to my business again that's a big might it's very easy to watch a commercial and skip the commercials it's a lot harder to then go to the business and buy the product digitally if we know where our audience is if we figure out who they are we can try to market to them a lot of a lot more effectively. I'm not <coughs> in the market to buy a new computer. Why am I seeing that ad? I don't need a plumber at the moment. Why am I seeing that ad? But I do need to plan a birthday party. Great thing, uh, good thing I saw that ad. So on each of these it goes on to explain and we'll be covering these things. Facebook can give you so much data about the, your, your demographics, ages, gender, what they've liked, their location. It's kind of scary how much these networks know about us, but it's oftentimes because we give them so much of our information. When we're on these networks and we write that, I went to go see the new Star Wars movie, or today was my birthday. We're putting all of that stuff to our friends and family, yes, but these networks are, connect, are collecting it. And we've agreed that they can collect it when we log in, when we create the account. 
that little thing that says terms of service that no one reads but everyone agrees to in there we've said yeah we've a, a, allowed Pinterest Instagram YouTube snapchat all of them we've allowed them to see our data what we put on their networks so social media can be a double-edged sword in that for the consumer for me the regular person I don't like how intrusive it is but for the business I love it I love how intrusive it is I know so much about my potential audience to market them exactly what they would care about yes When we do this on Facebook, we will see that we can use one login to manage multiple accounts, and each one is separate. None of them will know who manages what. They will be separate. So one account can let you log into multiple, or you could have multiple logins for multiple accounts. But then you have to manage, you know, seven emails. Um, yeah. A separate, ac not ex. In that, uh, in that case, if we're talking about the buffer, what they offer, yes, you would want to have different logins for the different clients. Okay. If uh, we mean, for example, on Facebook, uh, multiple people can log into Facebook to manage one Facebook account. But yes, if we're talking about buffer, we would want different accounts to log in for the different clients. Okay. Thank you. So good article to read. Uh, the purpose of this free stuff here gets started with buffer they have these great articles but the point of this website not is is to just not give away great articles the point of this website their ultimate conversion is to buy the buffer system which is a way for you to manage multiple social media accounts people come in and say okay I've got to manage my Facebook and my Twitter and my Instagram I'm going crazy there's so much to do companies like buffer and other companies will let you aggregate everything into one login and control all of your accounts from one login um, there is a version that is free that has some limitations and then there is versions that go up in value the awesome plan lets you control you know 10 accounts or whatever the small business lets you do that the big business that you do that. So I'm bringing up Buffer as a great website to read about this and learn how to do it, but Buffer's goal from giving away the free stuff is buy our service so that you can easily manage all your networks at once. And I'll come back to Buffer for that purpose a little later. I'm mentioning Buffer at the moment for the great articles. A simple three-step approach to increase conversions and ROI with social media advertising. Question? How did you find those articles? Blog .buffer com. ROI, what's ROI? Return on investment. Return on investment. I invested or I spent X amount of money or time. What did I get out of it in return? So here, three simple steps. A simple three-step approach to increasing conversions and return on investment with social media advertising. Getting started with Instagram for your business, eight simple steps. So Buffer has a product to sell, but they've also got free articles at their blog. And we're not going to be able to cover Instagram here, but here's a, here's a how-to article on managing Instagram. Here's another one. blog.hootsuite.com. Hootsuite 
is another one of these aggregator websites that you can manage multiple things at once and guess what they've got a service that is free and paid and a blog with free advice Hootsuite their ultimate goal is to sell subscriptions to their service to manage multiple accounts and part of the way they entice you is with something free these articles socialmediaexaminer.com's ultimate conversion is to sell tickets to their conference or to buy their book or whatever well along the way they're giving a lot of free advice to help you get enticed Victor's Bakery my fictional business my ultimate goal is to sell cupcakes just because I put great photos of my cupcakes all day long on Facebook doesn't mean I'm gonna sell them I have to know how to use social media how to reach an audience how to build the audience how to keep them entertained when to put a good ad what kind of ad to put and then I sell cupcakes it's a lot of work a lot of effort but Facebook and all of that can be for free I can uh, uh, take my take my free time to be posting on the different networks and then I get sales again easier said than done but the more you know about this and the more you do this the better let's see a, a few items at the Hootsuite blog so on our notes here I'm also adding blog.hootsuite.com. Let's see what they've got today. Employee advocacy on social media. How to make it work for your business. How to get more Facebook likes. 10 tactics that actually work. 12 quick editing tips for social media managers. Yes. It depends on what your product is. Their main product is a service to manage different networks. So they're giving away a lot for free. If their product was a book on how to run social media, they're giving away too much. If my uh, business, my bakery in the real world, if I'm giving away a cupcake to everyone that walks in, I'm giving away too much. What I could do is give away a recipe on my website not the exact recipe of my cupcakes a variation of it I could uh, give away you know a basic version of something that I'm trying to sell and then advertise also to get the full version to get the real version here's more here's what's for sale so give away just enough you bait the hook you catch the fish and then you catch the fish you eat the fish so just a little bit at a time but their main goal here is to sell their service. So yeah, they're giving away a lot of content. And we have to figure out for what our particular business is. Let's say I'm a realtor. Well, I'm going to I'm going to write a few articles about uh, three tips to avoid as a as a first-time homeowner or three pitfalls to avoid as a first-time homeowner. Well, there happens to be actually 17 things that a first-time home buyer needs to know. So I'm going to write a short article of three things and at the end say and for even more help from us, don't forget to call us and mention our article for 5% off or whatever. So we'll talk more in detail about what to do exactly, but that's a very good question. What do I, how much is too much to give away and how does it work for my business and all of that. But we've got these two weeks to talk in more detail. <laughs> One more, then we'll take our next break. Uh, I forgot to get the address. Let me just look it up here. Here it is. So the other address this other one Forbes.com slash social dash media. So Forbes is a uh, finance and business 
type of publication. They've got a web version. And they've got their whole tech social media portal. Forbes.com slash social dash media is the address. I'll put it in the notes. And here's yet another place for you to go and get more info. Forbes' ultimate goal, I suppose, is to sell subscriptions. So those subscriptions probably have content that is not available from the free portal. But they are enticing people to keep coming back to their site to um, to stay up to date. So stuff that's happening in the news, tips and advice, what's changing, uh, SEO and machine learning, etc. So it's a little bit more about the industry in general, a little less on how to, but it's to keep up to date with all of this technology stuff. So um, here, for example, uh, how many of you use uh, Messenger to communicate with friends and family, Facebook Messenger? All right, does anyone use iMessage? iPhone, anyone use WhatsApp? Anyone use Viber? WeChat? Line? There's a bunch of these out there besides the big famous ones. Well, out of nowhere now, Viber, which you might have never heard of, has 900 million users. The, these, app, these messaging apps at the moment are just for chatting with friends and family. I don't doubt that at some point, these networks will give us marketers or businesses a way to insert our ad into someone's chat. I have to be cynical about that and say, yeah, that's probably coming. I'm going to be chatting with friends and family, and then I get a little ad. We're chatting about where we want to eat, and a little ad pops up. Here's a restaurant. So keep up to date with all of this stuff on these blogs, on these industry publications, uh, to get tips, advice, tricks, pitfalls and just to keep up with it so there's plenty of other of them out there too um, well here's several for you to get started with some bedtime reading any questions on this before our second break okay, let's take one more break uh, at 7 55 we'll take a break until 8 05 and then when we come back we'll uh, we'll talk some more <laughs>